So here we are then, um, looking at the miniatures that I've got on my painting table at the moment. I haven't got many actually, because I haven't done any painting for a little while. Um, but I'm doing a Veneta Warband for my next um, campaign here at um, in Wellington. And I thought it would be good to sort of show you the steps of my typical sort of painting routine. Of course, I'm no pro painter, but I do have my own sort of style. And hopefully this can give you some insight into how I go about uh, you know, creating that style. So just to show you the miniatures, first off, we've got Inquisitor Erasmus Carter Volnus there, who is a, um, um, you know, a, a store exclusive anniversary model who um, I picked up. Um, love that miniature. So he's going to be my leader in this Veneta squad, psychic leader. Then got a champion that I'm using as um, Inquisitor Greyfax there. Um, again, fantastic model, um, great look for a witch hunter. Um, especially like the hat on this one, so I'm not even changing that, I haven't converted her at all. Um, the next up we have um, another little witchy hat there, and this is one of the Vendensed couple from um, Age of Sigma. I actually just really like the model as it is, so all I did is put a, an infrascope on the crossbow. Um, it's going to count as a long rifle, I think, um, or a grenade launcher, I haven't really decided yet uh, in the game. Uh, I've then got my Null Maiden, my psychic um, Null Maiden there, who's a Sister of Silence, just converted with a different head. And a little bit of green stuff to just repose her a little bit as well. Other than that, we've got my um, interrogator as well, who is the other Vendensed um, chappy from Age of Sigma. I love this model. Um, again, I've switched out the hands for Redemptionist auto pistols there um, and added a Harlequin head actually, which suits it really nicely. It looks like the dandy highwayman himself. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then I've got this beast here as well, who is actually a Blood Bowl. Um, a Blood Bowl human's body, I think, with some Orlock knives and a load of gubbins and um, maybe, uh, I'm not sure what the head's from, some sort of 40k dude. But there you have it. <coughs> In terms of the, um, the miniatures that Games Workshop produce, of course I'm a huge, huge fan of their miniatures, but um, I've got to say they're a little bit too clean for my painting style. So what I tend to do first off before I even start to prime them is I actually um, get rid of some of that cleanness by adding some texture. So the first thing I'll tend to do, particularly on the fabrics, um, particularly on the fabrics actually, is just add um, something called Typhus Corrosion um, before I actually prime them. Prime them. I've got Typhus Corrosion there. Um, this is a technical paint. It's an absolute must for anyone who wants to paint in a sort of grimdark style. It's great for adding texture to Fabrics, leathers, all sorts really, um, corroded metals, whatnot. I use it for absolutely everything. I use this a lot. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do as well is, again, I think the bases are a little bit too clean cut, so I'm gonna put some Sterland mud on this one, um, on the bases, um, with the um, corrosion on the bottom of the fabrics, the legs and the bottom of the fabrics um, mainly, um, just to make that a bit more muddy. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start applying that now with an old, sort of rubbish looking brush. This this one's synthetic and I use this for a lot of oil paint. Um, I never really clean this brush much at all, but it's gonna be absolutely fine for what we're gonna do here. Um, now with the with this stuff, um, I haven't got much left actually, but I tend to just dab a little bit on to the base in sort of random splotches. What I don't wanna do is cover, completely cover the um, the detail on the base. I also don't want to make the feet look funny at all. Um, try and keep the edges clean, the edges of the base clean as well. But you get the idea, you don't really have to do a lot there. Um, that's really about it. I'm just a couple of little splodges just to add a little bit of extra um, texture to the bases there. Look, um, it does make a difference. It's only a minute amount of texture, but when I do my sort of finishing step for my bases, um, this just cuts a lot of cuts a lot of time out of the equation, makes it look a bit more interesting as well. Um, <clears throat> so that's exactly how I do the bases. Very very simple. Again, we've got a book here on Carter Volnus's base, so I'm just going to sort of go around that a little bit, adding little bits of texture. I might go in with the Typhus corrosion on the book itself, but what I don't want to do is join the two things together too much with texture paint. I don't want to um, cover up any um, any gaps here, so I'll probably just go quite skimpy on the texture paint there, um, just adding little splodges here and there where I see fit. Um, moving around a little bit, 
I'm just going to get all these done straight away actually just so you can see what I mean. This one's got a bit more space on his base because he's got a much bigger base. So I can go a little bit more ham on this one. Um, just dabbing. I don't want to just paint it on because if I paint it on it's just going to look kind of ugly. Um, I just want to dab bits like that. And that's pretty much that one. I'm just rubbing off the edges. It gets a bit messy but I'm just rubbing off the edges of the actual um, rims of the bases as well just so that they don't have any texture on those because you want those nice and smooth and black in the end a um, little bit on this chick's base um, it's, when they've got cloaks it's a bit hard to get in there so you can use a smaller brush but um, I can't be asked in this case <coughs> last one now I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on as well underneath her legs there on her shoe um, rubbing that stuff off at the end there as well um, there we go. That's basically that. Um, that's the, that's the, um, the texture paint for the bases done. Um, I'm going to do it very, very quick. Now I'm, I'm quite a quick painter. I'm somewhat of a speed painter. I don't like to spend a lot of time on miniatures. Um, I don't like to, um, you know, I like to cut corners, but I also like my miniatures to look good as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, this time I'm just going to be giving this a bit of a shape, the Typhus Corrosion. <coughs> And this one's going to go on the bottom of all the fabrics, basically. So um, I can still do this while this stuff's drying. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, the granules are much smaller in the Typhus Corrosion, but if I can just get that closer to the camera there. I'm actually just going to splodge it down the bottom of the robes and just move it around a bit once it's on there. Now, that does look like I've put an awful lot on there, but I'm actually going to spread it out quite a bit and put some on the bottom of the feet there. Um, on the bottom of the tabard in the middle there. Taking care not to get it in other places. I have just got it on that flame there. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. Now this has got very, very fine granules in it. And those granules can really add a lot of extra texture, especially if you dry brush or anything like that. This, this adds quite a bit. I'm actually gonna put a little bit on the hood as well, to be honest, because it just looks a bit too clean for me. Teensy bit there, and that's, that's him done. Um, so <clears throat> sometimes I like to do it on the metals as well by the way um, just to give them a sort of slightly rusty effect um, so I will dab a bit of that around that shoulder pad there on this fella um, and again on the sort of shoes down the bottom there as well it won't muddy the detail too much because these are very fine sort of granules, but you don't want to just whack it over everything. You want to be quite targeted with where you put stuff. Um, again, the back there, just to give the effect of rustiness on those armor plates as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get that done and, um, and then I'm going to begin priming and we'll come back when we're fully primed and I'll explain the process that, that's next. So we're back having primed everything. Um, of course my hands are kind of disgusting now because um, I'm a messy bugger. But um, yeah, just showing you how I've actually gone about priming these guys here. Um, as you can see, I've done a sort of zenithal undercoat on these guys, um, you know, from black to white. Now you may think that um, that's not particularly realistic because light doesn't just necessarily come from above. But they're toy soldiers, so we don't care about what's realistic. We care about what looks striking. Um, in photos and whatnot. Again, I'm no pro painter. I'm not going to paint things realistically. Um, I'm going to paint things that stand out and look bold and look grimdark. But there you go. You can see there's quite a bit of contrast between the underneath and whatnot. I actually really like spraying quite minimally. I like the fact that these things look quite dusty and grainy. I like that um, because I tend to combine things with um, contrast paints actually. Um, so the next step after this, you can actually see, if I just bring up uh, maybe this guy here, you actually see on the robes where I did that contrast, um, sorry, that texture paint, um, it's added some nice detailing to the bottom of the robes there and made them look a bit grubby, um, as well as the bases there as well. Um, just a bit more filthy, like the floor of a festival. Um, nice nice and dirty looking um, but yeah everything blends nicely now in terms of like the kind of paints that I'm going to be using of course I am going to be using a range of Citadel contrast paints you can see in the back there and to be honest um, because this is a Venator gang I am going to be um, 
making everything look a bit different, but probably tie them together with a few accent colors. So I'm gonna go with quite a limited palette. Um, browns, blacks mainly. Um, definitely some reds because I'm a big fan of red in general and definitely some whites and grays as well. But I'm probably gonna try and keep it pretty minimal. Um, we're gonna use some golds um, and some sort of darker metals as well. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is straight onto this um, Zenithal primer is actually do all of my contrast paint. And I'm usually gonna start with the leathers and the darker colors and then move up to the lighter colors as well. The reason for this, personally, is because I find that, um, most people do it the other way around actually, but I, I tend to want to use the, um, the darker colors first so that, um, I don't know, um, I just like to use the, the lighter colors afterwards, to be honest. Um, it's up to you which way round you do it though. Um, it's hard to correct mistakes with um, with contrast paints though, so uh, just be really careful and use a, a steady hand when you're gonna do it. Um, just getting the leader up here now as well, Erasmus Carter Volnus. Um, just such a lovely, lovely miniature. Not sure how I'm gonna go about doing his armor plating and stuff, um, but you can see my priming is really rough and grainy and yucky looking, but it actually lends to the finished um, product as well. Um, so there we go, we're gonna get into doing some contrast paints now. So, starting off with some um, Black Templar uh, contrast paint here. I'm actually just gonna go straight in and start painting these boots. Um, now, like I said, I usually start with the darker colors and work my way um, towards the lighter colors but I tend to try and be as neat as possible on the first couple of passes. Um, and then I can always go over the detail afterwards with um, standard looking paints, but you get the idea. I'm actually gonna block out all of the black areas with Black Templar. Now I love Black Templar, I think it's great. It um, isn't a pure black obviously, because it's a contrast paint, but it does, um, does give me over a Zenithal Prime, it gives me a really nice finish actually, that I'm usually really happy with. Um, so I'm gonna go on and continue painting all the black areas on this, which there are gonna be quite a few of actually. Um, and then I'm gonna move on to actually doing the rest of the crew. So usually if I've got a, bunch, a whole gang to paint, I'll do one color throughout the entire gang, and then I'll, I'll switch over to the next colors and then Towards the end, I can start changing things up where the individuality comes in, but um, you get the idea. Um, it's a pretty easy process, this. It's hard to do while I've got the camera in between my arms because I'm trying not to knock it, but um, you get the idea. I hope you can see that nice and clearly there. Um, and then after this, I'm gonna go in with the brown um, and go from there. So you can see there that we've done the Dandy Highwayman himself, my interrogator. Um, it's still got wet paint on him, but that's basically all the black that I'm gonna do on this guy. It's actually less black than I thought there was gonna be. Um, the coat is gonna be a dark brown, and we're gonna use um, Wildwood, I think, for that one. Uh, we're also gonna use some snake bite Leather, which is another lighter brown. Um, and we're gonna use some Skeleton Horde on the sort of um, creamy sort of areas, um, particularly the, the paper on the um, purity seal there. We're gonna use some um, areas of red, um, and then we're gonna do the metals last. I like to do the metals last because they tend to cover up any mistakes that I've made. We've got metals on the um, cuirass that he's wearing there, metals on the gun, and little tiny gold details all over the whole thing as well. But to begin with, I'm actually gonna start moving on to the other um, characters in the warband and doing all the black on them first. So there we go. So just quickly, I've done the blacks on all of these six here. Um, there weren't actually too many blacks. I think we're gonna go into a bit more detail um, with, and add a lots and lots of browns in a minute. Um, there's actually no skin on most of these, so I'm gonna skip um, doing that step. I've just done a teeny weeny bit on Carter Volnus's face there, but he's got a massive bionic eye, which is obscuring the skin detail on that anyway. And the only one that's actually got any sort of skin of note is the face on the Knoll Maiden there. Now it doesn't matter, I've been quite messy with that. I've um, gone over onto the metal there, but again, we're gonna paint that over with metal afterwards anyway, so um, it doesn't really matter, that'll touch up, plus we're adding highlights to all of this stuff afterwards anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna finish off doing some skin and then we're gonna move on to lots and lots of browns. As you can see, this chick here, um, 
to be honest, the face is kind of black underneath there and you're not really gonna see it with the oil washes and the finished product anyway, so I'm not even gonna bother doing the skin under there because of the angle that you're gonna look at this figure, you're never gonna look underneath the hat there, really. Um, teeny bit of skin to do on Inquisitor Greyfax's face there, still haven't decided on the size, sort of hair color that we're gonna go for, possibly red, um, not really sure yet, but we'll have a look. Um, but yeah, really, um, I'm using, I'm straight out of the pot here because I'm an absolute um, tyrant uh, and I'm going to be just spilling some contrast paint onto the faces here, making sure that I get all the angles, um, turning the miniature. Again, doesn't matter if I've spilled it onto the, um, the armor plating, that's fine, that's all I need to do. With Greyfax there is a tiny weeny bit on the face there. This is Darko Flesh by the way. Um, I'm just going to finish doing the arms on this young fella and then we're going to move on to those browns in a second. Be right back. Okay so I've done the skins on these six now. There's very little to do there but you can see um, just the heads on most of them. Now I remember I'm, I'm going to go in and highlight these and stuff anyway. Um, but. Again, I'm not a pro painter, I keep saying this. Um, I go straight from the pot. Um, raw dog, we don't even bother with um, new brushes. We don't bother with watering stuff down. We don't bother with palettes here. Um, I do it rough, rugged and raw, hardcore style. Um, That's just the way I paint. I can't be bothered, I'm too impatient. Of course, I know that I could be a much, much better painter if I did have the patience and if I did do things properly and use um, the right methods, uh, you know, two thin coats and all that crap, but I just can't be bothered quite frankly. And really here, I'm trying to show you how I paint. I'm not trying to show you how to paint. So I'm gonna go in with some wild wood now. Now this is for all the sort of darker leathers on this. Uh, there, I've got two darker browns in the contrast range. I've got Wildwood and I've got Saigal Brown. Um, Saigal Brown is darker. I'm actually going to use that for the bases. Um, uh, and you'll see what I do with that. But um, just showing you the dandy high women here. Um, I'm going to do the internal stuff a pale color. Um, and then we're going to do sort of red detailing as well. But for the time being, the cloak is the thing that I'm going to do brown. So let's just slap some brown onto here. Um, I've, remember, I've done all the black here. So it's if I go over the black slightly, not a problem. Um, but I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with the browns. We're going to come back in and do the rest of the crew with the same brown. It's quite a lovely brown, actually. This really rich um, it's a sort of cigar brown, I suppose. Anyway, you can see the color there. We're gonna come back when I've done that and it's dried. So as you can see now, I've actually gone a bit ahead of myself here and done um, some of the snake bite leather as well. So I've got two types of leather on here. I've got snake bite leather and we've got, um, what was it called, wildwood there as well. Just so that there's a bit of contrast between the two leathers. This guy's looking pretty boss at the moment. Um, I actually like just the plain brown. Um, cloak on him there. I'm not sure what color I'm going to do the bedroll, but the uh, mask and the um, little um, thing around that's probably going to be red. Um, but yeah, some really easy color choices here. I'm keeping it really simple. The ones that I'm actually struggling with um, is probably going to be Greyfax. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do her armor, whether I'm going to do it gold or I'm not really quite sure yet. We'll have a look, but I think the cloak's going to be red. So there's definitely going to be an accent of red on every single fighter here. Um, and I think the cloak will be probably red on this young lady as well. Um, but yeah, we'll keep it simple. I think simple is often best. This one um, is looking all right so far. We've got a black cloak, we're gonna do some gray fur on the back there and um, probably a red tabard with, I don't know, either gold armor or maybe red metallic red armor, I'm not really sure. Um, but definitely some purples are gonna be used as well, particularly on Mr. Erasmus Carter Volnus here. So we're gonna move on to that. Um, and we'll come back when I've done some of the next colors. So the next color I'm actually gonna do here now on the brown note is actually Skeleton Horde. So I've got some Skeleton Horde here. I really like this color for doing purity seals. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna splodge that on with the purity seals. This guy's covered in purity seals, which is pretty cool. Um, these are gonna get splodged on and then we're gonna highlight that up so that it's a bit lighter later on. Sometimes I like to do it the other way around and paint them a lighter color and then come in with um, a seraphim sepia 
as a wash, but to be honest, this is a lot quicker. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do all the purity seals and skulls in this color, and I'm going to highlight the bone and paper slightly differently so that it does, doesn't does um, match too much. But uh, there we go, come back when I've done that. So there we have it. Um, all the blacks and browns are done. So we've done um, Black Templar, we've done um, Wildwood, we've done Snakebite Leather, and now we have also done the um, sort of bone colors. So the bone and the paper for the um, purity seals and whatnot. Still not dry there, but the, obviously the paper for the book is the same. The skulls, etc., all gonna be the same color. Um, it's looking pretty good on this guy. Um, I'm actually really happy with where he's going. I think he's going to look awesome when he's painted up. Just a tiny little splash of red um, on that mask as well, I think will really kick things off. And then some little gold accents as well and whatnot are going to look really cool as well. Still not sure on the bedroll, maybe a green, like a muted green sort of color on that, just so that it doesn't stand out too much. We don't want it to pop, we want that red to pop. Um, but still a bit, bit, um, bit lost with what to do with Greyfax. I'm not sure I like the black hat, so I might um, go back on that one. But I'm gonna leave her out of the equation for the time being while I sort of fiddle around with these things, but um, really liking the direction of where this is going. And this is just, you know, I haven't planned things out too much. This is just an organic, um, you know, an organic process. You can see there's lots and lots of messy bits there, but that's fine because it's all gonna get covered up with the metallics. Um, so next thing is going to probably be the reds now as we move on to that. So next up, is my favorite contrast paint color, and that's Flesh Terror's Red. Um, this, this bad boy is just fucking excellent. It works over metallics. It's really, really bold. It's got really strong pigment in it. I love it. Um, so yeah, I've done a little bit already. As you can see what I was saying about the little, um, the popping of that color, it just looks fucking fantastic. Just having that one little red piece on this guy, it's really, really gonna stand out and look great. I'm thinking the mask's either gonna be gold or actually white. Um, I've kept it, kept it white for the time being, but um, or I could do a sort of dark grey. We'll, we'll see. Um, but there's still a lot of colour to add to this guy. Um, yeah, but um, as you can see, this one here as well, Doralia, as she's known in Age of Sigma. I've just done the coat on her, and I didn't realise, but that's actually the box art colour. So interesting. Looks really nice on her, though. Obviously, we've got some lots of metal details to do on that too. Um, but you can see where we're going with this theme. Um, I've actually decided now, I've made a bold decision and I'm deciding to make um, Inquisitor Greyfax's armor a metallic red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do the metallics on that first, highlight it, and then go over with Flesh Terror's red and then give some battle damage to it afterwards. But I'm gonna leave her till last because of that, which means that I'll do that cloak of purple color. But going in with Flesh Terror's red now, um, again, straight from the pot with contrast paints. I don't use contrast medium. I think. I probably should use contrast medium, but I think if you learn how to control contrast paints properly, um, it's not too bad. Again, I'd always recommend starting at the top of a section if you're using contrast paints and working the paint downwards gravitationally. Um, and just being quite careful with it because I know that I'm gonna go in later and um, touch things up with gold and whatnot, but just be really careful on your first pass. Don't go too heavy with it, um, but just spread things around. If you see it pooling, then obviously, I um, don't know what that's on there for. If you see it pooling, just be careful, um, basically, and just reduce, reduce the amount of paint that's uh, on your brush there as well. Okay, so with the red done, it's still wet, of course, so it looks a bit shiny, but um, you get the idea. A messy job, but again, we're gonna clean up with the metallics when we go in and do all the trims and stuff, so that's why I like to leave that till last. Um, but this chick's looking really cool. Nice deep red on that one as well. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do actually is gonna go in with Shaish Purple. Now Shaish Purple is a nice, very dark, moody purple. I don't normally like purple as a color, but this one's really nice. It's quite an inky purple. Um, so we're gonna go into that now. Um, so I think with, we'll, go, we'll start with Carter Volnus here. And we're just gonna start with his armor, actually doing the armor in a nice purple, rich purple color with a gold trim. Um, so I'm actually going to start by covering the entirety of his armor and then I'm going to go in with my detail brush afterwards. Let me just see if that's actually on focus there. Not really. Um, I'm going to go in afterwards and do all the trim with um, the detail brush there. So back when I've done all that. Right then, today is a new day. Um, 
I sort of gave up last night um, and um, finished up uh, doing a lot of the base coats, but now I've come back and I've actually finished all the base coats, or at least all the contrast paint anyway. Um, so just having another look, there's a couple of little details that I've added to these guys. Um, the sort of green, I think it was Creed camo that I've done on the bedroll there. I've done that green on a few other, um, a few other pieces as well, uh, on the tabard on this guy just now. Um, I feel like there's too many colors going on in this guy, but we'll see. Um, but basically, the next step is going to be um, all the metals. So, um, as you can see, keeping it quite simple, the um, purity seals on all of these guys are um, pink. Um, so, all the pink contrast paint on that one. Done her with sort of fiery orange hair, so we'll mute that down a little bit when it's finished. Um, other than that, I've added a slightly darker wood, I think Seigel brown on the crossbow there, but all of the areas that you can see that are white are gonna be metal. So the metals that I'm gonna be using here, uh, I'm gonna be using lead belcher, of course, um, on all the sort of gun parts and, um, you know, weapon, weapon parts generally. Um, iron breaker, I'm actually gonna use a really old pot of iron breaker on the, um, on the armor that I'm going to then go over with some contrast paint to make uh, metallic effects. Uh, my favorite metal, which is Balthasar Gold, I'm gonna be using that on all the gold areas. And of course, um, Stormhost Silver as well to do highlights underneath the metallic armor that I'm gonna do. You'll see what I do with that in a second. So starting with Lead Belcher then, um, I'm just gonna be applying this um, on all of the um, all of the silver details, um, all of the gunmetal details on the miniature. Um, and I'm going to come back when I've done all of these with lead belcher. But yeah, very simple process. Right then, so I've painted the lead belcher on all of these guys. Um, as you can see, it kind of covers up a lot of the mistakes actually, which is quite nice. Um, there's still a few white areas and those are going to be the gold color. Um, of course, with the armor on this, um, I'm actually gonna do a sort of metallic green, I think on this guy, um, because I've done it before in the past and it works really nicely. Um, I'm also going to do a metallic red on Grayfax as well with gold accents as well. So we're gonna get straight into that and I'm gonna start doing the, um, What's the color called? Iron Breaker uh, next for the uh, metallic armor. So I've just done some of the Iron Breaker. Um, now these two, I've, I've mentioned before, these two are gonna have metallic, um, metallic armor basically. So you can see there's a slight difference between the knives there being in lead belcher and the um, Iron Breaker. It's still wet, so it's even more shiny, but it's definitely brighter. Um, now, why do I use um, Iron Breaker in this case? Well, because it's brighter. Uh, obviously the metallic, when I put contrast over the top of it, it's gonna stand out and have more defined um, shiny bits, basically. So you can see with her, she's got pretty bright, nice, nice looking armor at the moment. Of course, it's gonna be a hell of a lot more complex when I get into it. Um, but I'm actually, the next step in this is adding a sort of pre-highlight to the iron breaker. So I'm actually gonna do some Stormhost silver and dry brush it over the sort of raised areas on these two armor panels once it's dry. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm gonna show you exactly how the um, contrast armor works, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some gold, some, um, some uh, what's it called? Balthazar gold um, on the brass details on the other miniatures. Um, and I'm probably gonna use Balthazar gold on this after I've done the metallics. Um. So one of my favorite um, colors in the Games Workshop range is of course Balthazar gold. Um, I do a Minotaur's army. I've done an entire 40K Minotaur's army using this as a bronze scheme. Um, and I just really love the results of this one. Um, the way that I do it is I do Balthazar gold as a, um, you know, as a base coat. I then use Psychorax bronze as a highlight. I then wash it with purple actually, with um, Jeruki violet and then go back in with Stormhost Silver to add highlights. So this chick here, the Null Maiden, is gonna have that exact same scheme. So she's gonna look a bit like a Minotaur, but I guess that's true to the, um, true to the uh, Silent Sisters um, color scheme anyway. So we're just gonna go straight in there and paint the armor panels. Now this is quite thick out of the pot, obviously, so I'm just moving it around. Um, not really paying too much attention to watering it down, but you get the idea. I'm gonna come back once I've done the armor for her, uh, and then I can show you the next step. 
Huh, right, so here we are. I've actually done all the base colors on these six miniatures now. It didn't take me long at all. Um, I'm just gonna show you what they look like. Um, as we can see, the gold piping on um, Inquisitor Erasmus's armor was painstaking, so I had to do that off camera. The only thing I've left off this guy is actually the sword. This is only gonna actually be white, that tassel there. But um, you, you get the idea. Um, the purple and the gold are gonna go together really, really nicely because um, I'm gonna be using a violet wash over the top of it anyway, and that's also gonna go onto the armor panels too. So it's actually gonna hide any mistakes, and it's gonna be an easy, cheap method of getting his armor sorted, actually. Um, after that, we've got this young fella. Um, I've added a few little gold details to him. Quite rough again, but um, you get the idea. Um, moving on to this one here as well. Um, added a couple of little gold bits on the sword in there and, and the back there as well, other than that, leaving as is. And as you can see now, the Null Maiden is now looking pretty boss with her bronze armor, um, soon to be done properly. So I'll go through that process with you shortly. And the great sword as well. And these two, obviously the same sort of process, but we're gonna do a green metallic armor on this young fella. And last but not least is Inquisitor Greyfax with her soon to be red metallic armor as well. But that is all the base coats done very, very quickly. Again, just to go over it all, I did my um, contrast paints first. Um, I used reds, browns, blacks, um, and a couple of greens and purples. Other than that, that's all I used. Um, and then I went in and did my metallics. I did a bronze, I did a lead belcher, sort of um, gun metal, and I also did a brighter silver as well. That's really it, um, On to the next steps. So having done all of my base coats and all of my metals now, I'm gonna be going on to doing a little bit of washing or washes as they're called. Um, I don't use a lot of washes, generally speaking, um, in terms of acrylics anyway. I, I do use oil washes usually as a sort of um, post-painting step, but the, um, the washes that I'm going to be using here, of course, is Meln Oil for the um, guns and for the sort of um, weapon parts. I'm going to be using Agrax Earthshade for any of the other sort of metal parts. Um, and I'm gonna be using Druki Violet, as before mentioned, on all the bronze areas. I find that um, the purple wash on the bronze really, really does define it as bronze, as opposed to being goldish. Um, but you'll see what I mean when I start adding it. Um, we're gonna start off with the Null Oil to start with, though. Give that a wee shake. Um, and like I said, I'm just gonna be using a bigger brush here and actually going over um, the, where are we? Trying to get in focus there. There we go. Going over the gunmetal parts. So we work our way around. And that is really that. I'm going to come back once I've done all those areas um, and then we're going to move on to the Agrax Earthshade and then lastly the Druki Violet there. So as you can see, very simple step there. We've just added uh, Null Oil to the guns um, and some of the silver or some of the metallic details. Um, steel details, I suppose I should call it, on these guys. The next thing I'm going to do, of course, is move on to um, doing my bronze armor. So um, here we go with the bronze. So like I said, we started off with Balthazar Gold. I'm next going to be literally slapping um, purple over the top, Druki Violet, Druki Violet over the top here. And you'll see just what this does when we come back um, for the last step of this, but it really does go from gold to bronze very quickly. So in case you've never thought about putting contrast paint over metallics, um, I strongly urge you to because it looks awesome. These aren't quite dry yet, but I'm actually just gonna show you quickly just how the green looks already. Of course, there's lots to do to it. It's not too patchy though. That um, texture that I put onto it earlier has really lent it some good detail as well. Of course, this chick is just um, Still pretty wet, but you get the idea. Some really nice looking metallic red armor there. I'm gonna make it a lot more shiny though. Um, but yeah, it reminds me of the armor from the, the Dracula film actually. Um, Vlad the Impaler wears at the beginning. Now though, we're actually gonna go in and base them quickly. So I'm actually gonna pour Zygo, Zygo, what's it called? Cygor Brown all over the bases just to get that done and out of the way. And then we're gonna come back and then the next step is of course highlights really. So we're back onto the final step pretty much, and that's highlighting. Now, I've said before that my painting style is very simple and that um, I don't really take a lot of time to do it. However, 
Now I've assembled all my highlight paints here and I've assembled, assembled 23 individual colors, I'm starting to realize that maybe I'm talking shit. Now of course I'm new to this whole, um, this whole painting tutorial thing so you have to forgive me here um, and I may have lied to you if I've said that it's really really simple however um, I just went through my paint box and I picked out all the colors that I think I should need. I'm probably going to use every single one of these colors and there are 23 of them. So I'm just going to go through them really quickly. Apologies um, to anyone who thought it was going to be more simple than this. Of course, it doesn't have to be this complicated. You can only do one highlight, but I like to do two or three different types of highlights. Um, I don't mix paints that much. So if I did um, have, have the, um, you know, the uh, patience to to actually mix paints properly then then um, i would probably skip this step and there would be far less paint involved um, however i do have an abundance of paints that i've collected over the years so i may as well use them right anyway as you can see everybody's sitting here looking pretty flashy um, i'm quite happy with the direction that these are going in of course i've got six guys here um, but they've all got pretty much the same um, schemes generally speaking they've all got a little bit of green or a little bit of purple or a little bit of red on them so there isn't a huge amount of volume to do, so don't let that put you off here. Again, this is a video that's just showing you how I paint uh, and the steps that I use to do it. So I'm just gonna tell you the paints that I'm actually gonna use for each of the colors that I've got on these guys. The first two, um, on the pink here, I'm actually gonna use uh, Emperor's Children and Fulgrim pink, which is an edge paint, and that is just for the wax on the purity seals only. Um, so there you go. Uh, the next color for any of the greens, uh, the green fabrics and whatnot on the bedroll and stuff. I'm going to use Strachan Green and then Scarsnick Green, which is a bit more of a vibrant green, just as a sort of dot, very, very minute highlight on that one. Um, of course, I've got my metallics too. Um, on the bronze areas, I'm going to use a combination of Psychorax Bronze and then tiny little dots of Stormhost Silver, which is very, very bright indeed. Don't want to go over the top on that one. For the flesh, I'm going to use a combination of um, Kislev flesh and then Flayed One flesh with perhaps tiny dots of white as well. We'll see how light I want to want to bring things up. I tend to, even though I paint grim dark, I tend to go quite bold with my highlights because then I usually like to use an oil wash afterwards, which dulls everything back down again. Um, so I like to highlight up quite bright generally. White scar is just for any of the areas that I think need a real pop. Um, of course, I use white very, very sparingly. I am going to be using it on the white mask just a little bit there and on any sort of very, very, very um, dot, dotty details. Um, on, the gray, on the blacks, in fact, we're going to use um, Dawnstone and Administratum Grey just as an edge highlight on those, on those blacks. We're going to use um, Gawthor Brown. Bane Blade Brown and Zendry Dust on the snake bite leather and the, the other, the darker leather. Um, that will be the snake bite leather, obviously. These two being on the, um, the darker leather there. For the purples, um, we've got Gene Steeler, purple and Slaneshi Gray, which we're gonna use on the purple armor. For the reds, and this is where things get a bit more fun, for the reds, um, I like to personally use, I actually stipple Evil Sun Scarlet on. I then follow up with an edge highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. Um, every now and then I add a tiny little dot of Luganath, Luganath, Luganath orange and then I like to bring the whole thing together using Citadel Glaze which is hard to come by these days and this is blood letter. I love that stuff. It's awesome. Last but not least we've got a tiny bit of yellow that I'm actually going um, to use to show you how I do the eye lenses on um, the Barnak eyes, things like that. And then we've got Adam Abaddon Black as a very last step, which is um, to, to rim the bases after I've done the bases. There's a couple of steps that I'm going to do at the end, obviously, with pigment paints and with oil washes before we even get to that black. But to be honest, here is where I'm not going to actually show you how I, how I do any of my highlights. It, there's just no point. It's too, um, I don't think I can get the detail on the camera, but we'll give it a go. Um, but I'm going to go through it all and we're going to come back once I've done um, quite a lot of it. So here we are, we're looking kind of cool now. We're kind of halfway through doing at least the first layer of highlights, but you can see already how much difference this makes. Um, I'm just going to hold some a bit closer to the camera here so you can see. Um, but yeah, so I've done a little bit of the blacks, I've done a little bit of the greens, the reds, um, at least the first layer of highlights. I haven't done the browns yet, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go into it now. We're gonna finish off the blacks with a slightly lighter highlight. So I used Dawnstone a minute ago. I'm now gonna use Administratum Gray as a sort of final edge highlight here. Um, but yeah, as you can see, um, I, had to, I couldn't do all of this on camera because it's just, there's too many different colors to use, but it didn't actually take that long. Um, 
Again, if you're noticing that I'm not using a palette and I'm going straight from the pot, yes, I know it's very amateurish, but I've always done it. I've done it since I was a kid. Um, I started doing this in the 80s. Um, and it's just one of those things, I'm afraid. Um, what I do do though, which you won't see on camera, is me sticking the brush in my mouth constantly. So I keep a nice <clears throat> sharp point by um, constantly sucking on the end of my brush, which I know is, again, poor form, but I can't help it. But anyway, we're gonna go and do just tiny little, um, the knuckles here. The, the problem with black is you don't want to make it just a gray. We wanna keep it black, but um, it's really just those final highlights, those very, very um, uppermost where the light hits things is, is that I'm trying to touch now. Sometimes I just add a little dot here and there, but to make the whole thing pop, um, I, I usually add two highlights to nearly every color at the very minimum. So there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all that now and then come back when all of the highlights have been done. Just adding another highlight now, um, we're using Zandri Dust to highlight all of the um, snake bite leather areas. Again, I'm probably not gonna use much more of a highlight here, but with the leather, I tend to find that it's nice to actually not sort of edge highlight so much, but just um, actually just do dots every now and then, sort of giving the illusion of sort of texture on the edges there. It's quite hard for you to see there, I imagine, but yeah, Zandri Dust, I find, is the right sort of color for um, the snake bite leather here. You can see that's kind of coming together a little bit there as we sort of trace around the edges and just dab on little dots here and there just to bring out the detail. And then we'll be back once we've done some more browns. So there we are. We've um, added the oil wash to all six of these miniatures now. Um, now what we're gonna do very quickly is just go over with cotton buds. I haven't left it long actually. I've left it about five minutes. Um, a lot of people leave the oil washes to sort of partially dry before they remove them. Um, however, I don't tend to do that myself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm not going to dip these in mineral spirits. You can do that if you want to remove lot, a lot, but really because I went with quite a thin mixture, all I'm going to do here is just dab off the excess um, moisture um, and actually just make sure that there aren't any um, big areas of pooling on the miniature, especially down the bottoms of stuff um, where gravity lets it fall down to the bottom of um, a section. So actually, while these guys over here wait um, to dry, because it is gonna take quite a while, I just thought um, I might as well just show you the last step today. Um, otherwise, it's gonna lead, lead me into um, doing this over another, another day or two. Um, I've got this miniature here, which is just base coated. It's not finished by any means, but really here is all I wanna show you is the actual basing process that I do. Now, this is a simplified version of the basing process that I do here. Um, and I tend to do this with nearly every single miniature that I do. I will use a rusty orange pigment and I will water it down in a pot just like I did with my oil wash there. Um, now again, this is a, a pot that I've used over and over again, but what I wanna do here is make a slightly slushy, thicker texture. Um, it's not a wash, it's slightly thicker. Now what I do do, if I actually have it, is I usually use isopropyl alcohol as the fluid to mix with the pigments. I tend to find that's nicer. You have to work a bit more quickly with it and the alcohol actually evaporates um, and leaves um, the pigment in a really nice position. However, this is just water that I'm using here just to show you the effect. Um, so we're gonna just go in and actually just start dabbing this onto the base. And what this will do, as you'll see that it starts filling all the recesses. Now, I don't care if I get this onto the shoes, it's fine, that's kind of the whole point. Um, I can always rub it off with my finger. But you can see already how that goes on nice and thickly. I'm actually just gonna cover the shoes a little bit there as well. It's fine. Um, again, this miniature is not painted, but I'll just go over with my finger and actually just rub off um, some of the excess there. Or you, I could even go back with a uh, cotton bud actually as well. But you get the idea. That is really all I do with my bases. Once that starts to dry, um, it dries a lot quicker if you use isopropyl alcohol. Once that starts to dry and you've painted the rims black, it looks wicked. Um, and that's just my rusty, dusty um, bases there. Easy peasy really, isn't it? So that's it. Um, I'm actually gonna just finish these guys over here completely base rim do the rims of the bases black and then we're going to give you some photos of the finished product and that's really it 
so that was quite an interesting video to do because it's the first time I've ever really done a, a painting tutorial or something similar, um, at least with miniatures and not terrain. Um, secondly, it's quite interesting for me to look at my own technique and actually go back and see how I work um, and how much chaos and um, how much I short shortcut things and how much I just piss around and don't plan out stuff. Um, but that's why I'm quite kind of fond of this video. I think this will be a really good video for those of you out there who are like me and don't really plan stuff out and things don't necessarily go your way. And I'm, I'm going to put this video out anyway because um, I think this is a good example of your typical painting um, painting sessions that you will do, is that some of them will work out, some of them won't. I think with the six that I've done, so that's five, the six that I've done today, um, you can see that um, some of them, the more simple ones actually work better than the, the more complex ones. So um, I think the paint jobs for, for this, the ones that I'm happy with, are the ones that have the least amount of colour on them. Um, particularly like the armour on because of the Greyfax in the end, even though I thought she'd be the most challenging. I really like that red shiny armour on her, looks wicked. Um, and the green shiny armour on the other dude with the big, uh, big knives as well. But um, it doesn't feel like a complete Inquisitor squad, so I'm going to add a few more members to it. I've just done, I've just converted up a gun servitor actually with a grav cannon, which will be quite interesting to do. I'm um, just covering in him in purity seals now as we speak. Um, but yeah, I think if I'm honest, this is not the best work that I've done, that's for sure, by any stretch. I think if I bring up the Yagyu clan now, and you can see these outcasts that I did a couple of campaigns ago with a similar sort of colour scheme actually, but they just had more character and appear, a bit more sex appeal, I think, um, <laughs> if you can say that. I was much more proud of those guys, but I think what I did differently there, if I'm analysing it now, is these guys, I did them all in a batch. I did one colour across six miniatures and then so on. With the Yagyu clan, I did go and do each miniature separately. Even though they had a similar colour scheme, I did one at a time and finished them and then moved on to the next one. So maybe that way of painting actually works better for me, even though it might be slightly more time consuming. So there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, share, subscribe and check out my Patreon as well. Um, I've actually got another member of the squad coming in the post from the UK, the motherland, um, from my friend Adam, who I haven't seen in about 20 years. Um, so thank you very much, Adam. I'll be painting that Inquisitor up very shortly to add to this warband. Um, other than that, yeah, um, stay tuned for my next gang guide video. I've only got four left, I think, now. We just did squats. Um, and um, I'll be right back with another video this week. So peace out.